was. But Sean being Sean, he didn't prepare. Um, as you can see, it's nice and wet. Today. It's very simple. I'm just fishing in the harbour here. I tend to find that one up, one down works just perfect for this sort of style of fish. It's not match fishing, so I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to just fish the two hooks. Keeps the crabs off the bait a little bit. So here we go. What you're going to need to uh, build is some um, shock leader, highly recommended. Um, never go without it. Grease weasel, I'll find a good one. It's a classic. It's always worked well for me. So, first off, what we do is we draw a good arm length. Arm length. It's around about six foot. I'm about six foot. So, and then I'll take another, say, 12 inches. Snip at a diagonal. Don't know if you can see this. Go to the flat end. This end, what we're going to be attaching is a little lead link. These are Gemini ones. Stainless steel, they don't rust down, they're good quality, good stuff. Just a simple blood knot. Just pull that down. I tend to leave a nice tag end on it, just so when it slips and you cast in, it, it won't pull through. And use that little tag end where I cut out a 45. Makes it so much easier to pass through these. They're a bit dinky. Swivels. I tend to use just stainless steel sort of swivels. I find they're much, you know, they're reusable. You start getting rigs all smashed up as I've got down here. You just pick parts off and away you go. Swivel, so it's bead, swivel, bead, slide that down, bead, swivel. Slide that down. For the top end of the rig, the bigger swivel. I tend to use the boat size one o's when I'm uh, doing a lot of beach fishing, definitely from pendulum casting. But I'm just fishing in the harbour, and these are rated up to sixty pound. These little ones should be absolutely fine. Again, just a half blood knot, sixty pound shot leader we're using, so it's quite tight. So what I tend to do is do about five. Five turns, little bit of spit always helps. Got to lick it before you stick it, as they say. Again, leave quite a decent sized tag in. Now you might be wondering, Sean, why haven't you put a crimp on there? You know, I don't tend to use the standard plier crimps. What I do use, I can slide this down. Is these little coil crimps, they come in a wrap in a an already wrapped. I'll try to get a picture and put it online for you, but they, they come in a, a spiral, they come along. I don't know if you can see this on camera. So, say, I will get I will get those up pictures for you. All you got to do is cut these into size, get a nice pair of snips, just tri trim them off. I'd say less than a centimeter, probably about eight mil in length. All you have to do with these ones is wrap them onto the line. 
a bit fiddly at first, but once you've been using them for quite a while, you you probably never go back to crimps. I promise you that. It's absolutely brilliant. They, um, as you can see, it's attached there. That's the crimp. That ain't sliding nowhere. Trust me. You could have any size fish. It ain't gonna pull that down. The benefit of this, the line ain't damaged. There's no kinks in there. There's no dents in there. You put, put, put pressure with pliers onto. Uh, crimps it damages the line nine times out of ten you're going to get a snap off with that where you over crimp it or just with rust these completely stainless steel that one's been on a rig no, no more than probably about 20 times so they're totally reusable totally worth it break away of the company that sell them anyway we get back on so here's where the lead is going to sit it's my one up one down rig so my leads sits there, I have a crimp bead, swivel, bead, and then I'm going to put another crimp just behind it. Exactly the same as you would with crimps if, you, if you're into rig building, but these absolutely amazing. I don't tend to use, yeah these are absolutely amazing, they're worth the weight in gold to me. Um, it's totally reusable. <coughs> Yeah, these are worth the absolute weight in gold to me. They're totally reusable, stainless steel. As long as you don't lose them in the water, like, a, like being snagged up or having a crack off or something, these last for years. And as I say, don't damage the line, so they're brilliant. So there's the first part of this one up, one down. So you can see the lead link. It's a Gemini one. Uh, it's just a four ounce plain bomb on that one. Very short, I tend to use about maybe an inch away from swivel to the base of the lead. We go down to the top bit, we've got quite a length of line here, but I prefer longer, much longer rigs. It's not, it's not carp fishing, we're not fishing for carp over silt ponds and using the hair rigs. We don't need short rigs, we need them long. The tide flows and flappers, brings life to the, uh, to the bait presentation really, and it's a very much more natural Definitely when you bass fish in, it definitely, definitely works off better to have a longer snood. Here again, we just start off with one bar, then you just wrap along. That's another one here. Okay, so from the top, where this uh, connect to your rig line, it, this is the line off the reel. Your swivel attaches to the line on the reel, and this is a way to attach rig. This is a way to attach your rig to the line. It's just a simple. These are pound from the pound shop. They're strong enough for this sort of fishing. If not, I tend to just use the Gemini straight through to a swivel. Here we go. Next part is the snood lengths. And, uh, slip that on. So. Well, the next part is down to the snood. So for the rig body, I'm using grease weasel. I can't fault it, as I say. Um, I know you can get fluorocarbons, but you know, I always fish clear line, definitely on my snoots. And it, it's an absolute, it's a brilliant, brilliant line. Can't fault it. And the second one today is Amnesia. I'm fishing in the harbour today, so I'm fishing quite light. I'm fishing with uh, 12 pound snoots. Hopefully we don't get too much crab activity down here today. It's, it's November, so it, it should be quite bleak, to be honest. I tend to stretch them a little bit, just to, have definitely this lower diameter sort of line because it does have a bit of stretch to it. Um, simple again, it's going to be a half blood knot. I don't tend to do a full blood knot unless I'm in matches and I'm making sure that everything's tip top condition. So I'll do about seven or eight turns around the line, keep the loop, 
And as I say, I'm only doing a half blood knot, so I'll go straight for the loop. Very simple. Pull that down, and away we go. You know, that ain't coming undone. <laughs> when I'm snipping my sort of snoods and stuff like that, I tend to leave quite a big tag end. I don't know if you can see that there, but I do use a really big tag end on it. I'm doing a film too. It's just so, as the rig slips, it's not going to come undone. That's why I'm only using a half blood knot, I'm not using no glues or, or anything. So, on the bottom snood from the lead, I'm going to go down to about three and a half foot, maybe, four foot. I'm going to snip that there. Start again. And the same for the top snood. And there's exactly the same, half blood knot, seven or eight turns around it. The drops are good and yeah exactly the same game, half blood knot, seven or eight turns, put it down. Well guys so down to the business end I can't so guys down to the business end you can't really fold cameras on. <laughs> you know, for the price of them, chemically sharp, and they're just absolutely amazing. I love them. I've tried many different hooks in the past, but you know, Camazan always, always the winner first choice. I don't tend to use the match hooks either. Standard Camazan hooks, so it's absolutely brilliant. I'm using a size two at the moment just for a uh, chance of small bass and maybe a flatty. Maybe an eel. I really want to get bait here. So, it's again the same with the swivel length. I'm just going to do half blood knot, seven, eight turns, leave a fair size tag end. I'll leave a nice tag end, I'd leave that normally, but if you can see, decent sized tag end, probably about a centimetre. They're just simple, very easy knots. So say when you leave leave a decent tag end, it's not it's not coming undone. You're not going to lose fish. Voila. Now for the bait end, um, it's a nice little lug bed just as you approach here and it's, um, it's a very small lug worm but absolutely prime sort of bait down here. It's just sort of like a muddy sandy sort of area. Ragworm does work down here. I visited Dave's today, I got a couple of quid's worth of worm just to get out and try to get a video put together for you guys. Baiting up worms. Simple to get a nice little ragworm, nice hook. Then to just pop them through the head, straight through, feed them up. They'll be too forceful. You don't actually need to be really gentle with them, and they they wiggle their way onto the hook. You want to try to keep your worms <coughs> so the hook stays through the middle of the worm. Bit of practice. I tend to that sort of size worm there. I'm just gonna fish single worms today. I'm not, not really um, got the bait to be pissing around with. Anyway, I'm just gonna fish it just like that. I don't know if you can see the hooks points just coming out the tip of its tail. Good little presentation. Worm's still alive. Happy days.
Yeah, pretty much. Just get the worm. Be very gentle with it. You don't need to be so, so forceful. You find it's much easier to thread a worm on. There's a bit snap this worm, so I'm going to bring it near on out to the tower. I'm not going to head hook the worm. I don't know if you can see that, but it's wiggling around nicely. Yeah, so much for a force eight today. Um, I think it's just because we're in a sheltered area. I'll come straight round and southwesterly winds, and that's southwesterly, so we've got a lot of buildings and stuff behind us. So I think we're going to be have quite a nice night. The rain's not too bad.
but get it back in the water. Yeah. Right guys, this is just what I'm after, a little pin white in here, little dinky thing, live bait time. I had one a little while ago, I've got to keep the light off yeah. I had one a little while ago and um, it's died in the bucket, but I've just made up this little rig, really simple, snooped off, a little bit of £20 snood off there, nice free I work. Get this little baby in the water. It's the perfect time, just coming up to high water now. From experiencing that, you get quite fear. I don't know if you can see this, I'm just putting the hook straight through its nose and through its mouth. Hello guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'm a bit wet through now, getting a bit hungry. I think it's time to knock it on the head. I've got two baits out at the moment. I'm not really that hopeful getting anything more. Didn't get anything on the live bait, but it's well worth a go. Any guys wanting to come down here, give it a go. I really recommend it. I'm fishing on a really small tide tonight. Normally about 4.4 to the bigger, larger tides are much, much better. You get a lot more bass. Would recommend if you've got the patience, or if not, go to your local tackle shop and buy some. Using some lugworm down here. Um, you've got just over on the right here, towards me, you have a shingle bank, and that's absolutely cracking with a bit of lugworm, bang on high water, you're on guaranteed a five pound bass. As I say, guys, just got you come down here, give it a go. As you can imagine, I'm wet through, my legs are itching, I'm starving, hungry, and I just can't wait to get into the bath. Tight lines.